a one snappy operator. Cliff, darling! <laughs> Ernst! Dearest heart! Oh. Where were you last night? I have such a regret. I was just explaining to Herr Bradshaw that I was delayed on business, but I will come to the club as soon as possible. Oh, don't you dare. I don't want anyone going near that bloody club ever again. Just put it anywhere and unpack later. Unpack? But Herr Bradshaw Oh, well, I'll just it? be here temporarily. I'm sorry, but that is not possible. How much are you paying? 50 marks. 60 marks. It is not the money. 70. I will not permit. 80. 85. Done. Ah. Hmm. Good. Now, please make yourself cozy, Frau Bradshaw. <laughs> Such a to-do. Well, I will see you Friday for our next English lesson. But I am telling you something. I think I am taking from you the wrong kind of lessons. <laughs> <laughs> Sally, what the hell do you think you're doing? What'd you guess? I was terrified. Are you? Oh, what if you'd thrown me out? Could you imagine how that would feel? Being thrown out twice in one day? You mean Max? Oh, dear Max. And you know whose fault it was, don't you? If you hadn't come to the Kit Kat Club and been so dreadfully attractive and recited poetry and forced your way into my dressing room. <sighs> Sally, about your staying You here. know what I'd love, darling? A spot of gin. Gin? You've got some. <laughs> I mean, I think one must. No, I, I don't have any gin, but... <laughs> oh, well, prairie oysters, then. Prairie oysters? Oh, I practically live on them. It's just raw egg whooshed around in some Worcestershire sauce. It's heaven for a hangover. Well, I, I haven't got a hangover, but... You carry eggs around with you. Of course. One never knows when one will have a desperate craving for an omelette, does one? <laughs> Actually, I salvaged these from my previous digs. Hey, that's... Quite a coat. <laughs> it should be. It cost me all I had. Little did I realize how soon I'd be unemployed. I gather your friend Max runs the Kit Kat Club? Oh, you are divinely intuitive. I do hope I don't fall madly in love with you. You're not in the movie business in any way. Oh, then you're safe, <laughs> more or less. Though I do believe a woman can't be a truly great actress until she's had several passionate affairs and had her heart broken. Damn. I should have let Ernst pay my cab fare. He's got all that money from Paris. From Paris? He smuggles it in for some political party. Ernst is in politics? Oh, it's all so very tedious. Halsenbeinbrüch. <laughs> it means neck and leg break. It's supposed to stop it from happening, though I doubt it does. Mmm. <laughs> it tastes like peppermint. That's because it's my toothbrush mug. Well, it makes me feel terribly sensual. <laughs> Sally, you've got to understand. Oh, is this that your novel? <laughs> it's in German. Mein Kampf. It's not my novel. I thought I should know something about German politics. Why? You're an American. <gasps> Ooh, a typewriter. How creative. You could be the next Dostoevsky. Oh, will you allow me to watch you while you work? Gunther never would. Who? Gunther Warner. He does films. And guess who's going to be in his next one? The woman in room 16. Are you the woman? No, oh. unfortunately. I play Penny, an English girl. It's a very good part. Gunther wrote it specifically for me. Well, what's it about? Oh, I haven't the foggiest. It's in German. <laughs> Listen. Guten Tag. Ich Kaiser Penny. Und ich bin Engländerin. Nobody's ever translated it for you? Oh. But it's so much more fun not knowing. <laughs> Will you allow me to watch you while you write? I promise to be incredibly quiet. Uh, look, I don't think I can work with someone else on the premises. Well, then I'll go out. Take long, invigorating walks. In the middle of the night? Yes. And, and there's another thing. I'm, I'm not a prude, at least. Are you a homosexual in any way? <laughs> Bobby says you are. Bobby? One of the boys at the Kit Kat Club. He says he met you in London. At the Nightingale Bar? The Nightingale Bar. Is it possible? I guess. Anything's possible. I've been to lots of bars. And did you and Bobby have an affair? Did he say that? Well, he implied it. I see. You know what, Cliff? I'd like to withdraw the question. Because really, it's none of my business. I think people are people. I really do, Cliff, don't you? I don't think people should have to explain anything. For example, if I should paint my fingernails green, Oh, and it just so happens I do paint them green. Well, if anyone should ask me why, I say, I think it's pretty. I think it's pretty, I reply. So if anyone were to ask about you and me one day, you have two alternatives. 
You can either say, oh yes, it's true, we're living in delicious sin, or you could simply tell the truth <laughs> and say, I met this perfectly marvelous girl in this perfectly wonderful place as I lifted a glass to the start of a marvelous year. Before I knew it, she called on the phone. Moment I was no longer alone, but sat reciting some perfectly beautiful verse in my charming American style. How I dazzled the senses was truly no less than a crime. Now I'm this perfectly marvelous girl in my perfectly beautiful room, and we're living together and having a marvelous time. It wouldn't work. You're much too distracting. Distracting? No! Inspiring! <laughs> she tells me perfectly marvelous tales of her thrillingly scandalous life, which I'll probably use as a chapter or two in my book. And since my stay in Berlin was too forced, creation, what luck to fall on a fabulous source of stim. And perfectly marvelous too Is her perfect agreement to be Just as still as a mouse While I'm giving my novel away Yes, I've this highly agreeable life In my perfectly beautiful room And we're living together And having a marvelous time Sally, I just, I just can't afford Well, do you have any money? Um, a few marks Six. Oh, God. Oh, please, Cliff, just for a day or two, please. I met this truly remarkable girl in this really incredible town, and she skillfully managed to talk her way into my room. Oh, Cliff! I have a terrible feeling, I said. I've only got one narrow